Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look at a very underrated game released first on the Xbox One with Rise, Son of Rome. When the Xbox One was released, I'll be honest, with such a disaster of a release that Microsoft had coming off of the Xbox 360, I truly thought it was over for the brand. I did purchase a PlayStation 4 first when it was released, but always had issues with the controller as I was used to the offset analog thumbsticks. I just couldn't get comfortable with where I would still play on the PC with my wired Xbox 360 controller. During this time, I found that one of the very first games to be released on the console, Rise Son of Rome, was released on the PC via Steam. On sale, I took the plunge. This was one game that gave me faith to trust Xbox again and traded my PlayStation 4 for an Xbox One S. I will say that I do regret not having both systems as there was a tremendous amount of games that I missed that I still plan to revisit with my PlayStation 5. Rise Son of Rome was developed by Crytek and released by Microsoft in 2013 for the Xbox One and on PC in 2014. With a lot of bad reviews which garnered the game on a deep discount, I took the plunge to see what the hubbub was all about. I can definitely see a lot of weaknesses here, but also a lot of strength. Originally developed as a Kinect game for the Xbox 360, the game was redesigned to be a hack and slash game. This third person action adventure is set in an alternate version of ancient Rome as you follow the exploits of Centurion Marius. The story here revolves around a simple revenge story where Marius' family is murdered by a barbarian invasion from the province of Britannia. As Marius and the Emperor are in a safe room, he explains his life experiences on how he has become the man he is at present and what led to it. The writing and performance of the voice actors is incredible. Every character is distinct and very well acted and portrayed in the cutscenes. It felt like the quality here could have been a movie was the bar they, they truly reached. Probably the best part of the game was the storytelling paired with its pacing and pushed many players to see what happens next. These Britons, they are honorable in their own way. They have no honor. These vermin dare to stand against the might of Rome. They deserve to suffer our retribution. Our retribution? Or yours? Sir, I enough! We will end this rebellion my way and not put the lives of good men at unnecessary risk. Is that understood, Centurion? Understood, Commander. Ah! <laughs> You're a gladiator. <laughs> oh. Mm, the, uh... The mythical armor is... It's a fine touch indeed. You gave me quite the shot. Only the most... Skilled fighters can enter the tournament. Let me see if you fight as well as you dress. Crytek, being a master of technical prowess in their games from Crisis series to the original Far Cry, they were no slouch when it came to the visuals, and it also shows here with Rise. Taking advantage of their experience, the quality and design are wonderful and still holds up today. The character designs, animation, and environment all have distinct looks to them and are never bland. There were many times I had to stop and stare at the world they created as it felt so authentic for the time. The soundtrack here is also what you would expect with a game of this caliber that was epic in nature to help you push through the events to make sure that every scene that was coming up and that much more was important and powerful enough, especially as you trudge forward.
biggest con here, and it's a pretty big one, is its gameplay. The game really doesn't rely on big mechanics here. You slash, dodge, defend, and slash again. When a death icon appears above the enemy, this is your chance to do executions where you will get stat bonuses from being more powerful attacks to healing your life bar. I would choose my life bar that made me numb to the executions just so that I could replenish my life. With this kill option available on every enemy for the most part, I would keep refilling my life with no real danger on how I would play. It was also very repetitive in nature where you would fight from one area to another and move on with the same style of fighting over and over again. Soon, the fancy executions, although impressive to see, got extremely repetitive to the point where I didn't care anymore but just wanted to finish the incredible story. To break up the fight, there were different parts of the game where you would get a spear or a crossbow at times, but not enough to take away from the main combat. Overall, the fantastic visuals, the world, and story was marred by what you do in it with incredibly bland combat that I thought was incredible for the first two chapters. Still a game I would recommend to play for its story and AAA quality. With rumors of a sequel, if the game were to come out in the near future, I would love to see the combat worked on the most, as I know that everything else is pretty much in good hands if done by Techmaster at Crytek. That's it for this second look back at an incredibly underrated game that does have flaws, but one that you should still give a try. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and Greg, take us out of here, and I will see you all next upload.